I'm starting to get a little bit concerned that OpenAI might be asleep at the wheel. First up, OpenAI's incredibly impressive Sora video generator that was announced earlier this year is still nowhere to be seen. I haven't even heard about artists getting access to this thing, and the reason that is so concerning to me is because I remember the early days of Dolly where creatives, artists, would at least get some sort of testing access to these tools. But with Sora, it seems to be the other end of the spectrum, where instead companies like Toys R Us or Motorola are getting some sort of paid access to Sora in order to create advertisements. So instead of creatives getting access to this technology, it's companies, which is somewhat alarming to me. There are also a bunch of rumors floating around that GPT-5 has been pushed back so it's not going to be released at all this year, but it's important to note that OpenAI never necessarily said that they would release a GPT-5 this year. And the sources of GPT-5 being pushed back loosely come from this video of the CTO who basically said that we're going to have PhD level artificial intelligence in the next coming years. But if GPT-5 is at that next level echelon, it's pretty clear that it probably isn't even coming out this year. Which again, is somewhat concerning considering what the competition is doing. One of OpenAI's larger competitors is Anthropic AI, and they make something called Claude. The latest being Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is very competitive, if not a little bit better than OpenAI's latest GPT-4 Omni. And Anthropic has a ton of tricks up their sleeve. In fact, they just announced a couple. So first off, Anthropic announced that the Claude artifacts can now be published online, and artifacts are essentially a little workstation, if you will, for the artificial intelligence to use and code inside of while you're chatting with it. So you can actually share those now. Not only this, but you can actually remix the artifacts and change them around, and then also share those with other people. So there's this evolutionary aspect to to sharing artifacts that is really, really intriguing that you don't get with OpenAI's GPTs, let's say. And also, OpenAI's GPTs, well, they don't have a whole entire separate area that allows the AI to essentially run code, like creating video games, for example, building tools, etc. They also made some updates to their workshop API. Claude can now generate its own prompts, create test variables, and show you the outputs of prompts side by side. You can also enter variables in manually, so for developers, this is really interesting, and I'm also interested to see if the average layman like myself can benefit from these as well. They have this new Evaluate tab that allows you to automatically create test cases to evaluate your prompt against real-world inputs. Essentially, stress test whatever you're trying to build. And as I mentioned, you can do side-by-side -side comparisons as well. But yeah, this is inside of the developer console, so it's a little bit separate from the artifacts that we were just talking about, but we're going to look at both today. I think you will realize from today's video, though, that all of this stacking up really looks competitive against OpenAI. Claude and Anthropic are making moves fast. They're iterating quickly and providing users with access to new tools, while OpenAI teases things and dangles them in front of our faces, but doesn't actually ever give us access. So let's start today's journey by checking out the artifact that Anthropic actually provided to us in this tweet. I think it's that crab demo game. When you open up an artifact, it gives you this little warning message saying that this is an experience generated by users with Claude AI, and you just click show content. And as you can see in the little corner down here, it says made with Claude, and it says Claude's closet, and um, <laughs> I think we can now decorate this uh, crab here. So we can give him a top hat, a gold chain, a mustache, and a surfboard. But we could also modify and remix this artifact. And that is gonna show up right down here under remix artifact. So if we click this, it makes a brand new Claude chat, and I say, I want you to create some variations of this artifact. Three ways to remix it. Okay, so it gives it like this a little pre-prompt. Pretty interesting. And right here you can see they give us a couple of different examples. We could do the dance party, wardrobe, or underwater theme. I like the dance party, honestly. That's a, that's a pretty interesting one. Of course, you could just suggest your own as well, but I think the dance party is funny, so... Let's do that. Before we dive any deeper, a quick word from today's sponsor. 
Sponsors are the reason that I can pursue this channel full time, so today's video is brought to you by Guide. This is the ultimate generative AI platform for creating how-to videos and visual documentation, and it does so in seconds. With Guide, anyone on your team can create professional quality videos for training, onboarding, and more. No video editing skills required, mind you. Guide lets you capture your workflow with just a few clicks. You then and edit the video and audio as easily as editing a presentation on Google Slides. You can also personalize it as much as you want by choosing from over 100 different voices and languages. Guide is a super versatile platform. I mean, the list goes on for different use cases. You can use Guide for training sessions, new feature announcements, getting started kits, and much, much more. If you need clear and concise direct how-to videos and visual documentation, Guide is your place. You can also also embed guide videos pretty much anywhere from Zendesk to ServiceNow, Gmail, Slack, Confluence, lots of support in that regard. So folks, start using guide today and experience the magic for yourself. Click the link down in the description below to download the free extension, no credit or debit card required. And now back to your regularly scheduled content. Welcome back everyone. Okay, so now Claude has recoded and remixed this little demo. So here is the dance party. Let's see if it works. Okay, yeah, that works pretty good. We got the disco ball and it changes the color of the background. You can also play rock. I think that's supposed to be a guitar. Um, I, <laughs> I guess that sort of worked out. And then they have pop too. And I assume that's like a, a little party hat. But yeah, pretty cool little remix that Claude created all for us from the previous one. So if you find someone's online and you really like it but want to tweak it in some way or you think you can make it more useful in another way, there you go. Ooh, okay. I just had a good idea. All right, Sonnet, I want you to make me a physics sandbox in Artifact. All right, there is our simple uh, physics sandbox, apparently. Okay, I think I can grab these objects and kind of try to move them around. Doesn't work that great. All right, I finally got it to make something pretty smooth. So with left click, we can drag this object around. And then if we right click, it will drop it. And you can see the, the physics kind of at work there. Let's see if we could throw it. Nah, not really, but it is kind of like this really, really basic uh, little physics sandbox. It's pretty cool. So now down here, we could either download it to a file, copy the contents, or publish it. And it's pretty much that simple. We just publish and copy the link, and then we can share it with other people. Wow, it's as easy as that. Not too bad. Now, obviously, Claude artifacts right now in their current state aren't going to change the world or anything, but it is something that OpenAI does doesn't really have yet. And I find that very interesting. Imagine a future not too far from now where a Claude model can iterate autonomously upon artifacts and create more advanced ones with more accessibility to different coding tools. We could go from making silly, fun little web apps to actually creating much more useful projects. OpenAI has vaguely explored similar ideas in the past, but not to the extent that Anthropic has already invested into them. And with OpenAI supposedly being the leader of this AI race, it's a little concerning that they might get left in the dust. Again, OpenAI advanced Advancements are cool and all, but not if we can't actually use them. So now I want to dive into the API stuff, which in my opinion is just a little bit more exciting. Obviously, this is in their API section. That's how you get to it. But similar to the OpenAI Playground API, you can use it for other than building business tools and things like that. It can help the average everyday Joe. Unfortunately, we do have to purchase credits just like the OpenAI API. It's no different in that sense. It's lucky for us then that the API really isn't all that expensive. And you can see up there at the top that you can claim up to $5 in free credits if you input your phone number. So I'm going to move over on to the workbench section and you can see they've already got some really, really interesting tools. So you can add message pairs and essentially I will explain to you how this works if you've never used a large language model API before. This is obviously the assistance message. So in this case, we can make it seem like you can type whatever we want in here and that would be 
in the AI's mind what it already responded with. So if I said, you are a loser, the AI will literally think that that's what it said. I'll respond, hey, that's not very nice. Now if I go back and hit the run button, we can see Claude at this point with the response, yes, it's going to apologize. I apologize, that was not an appropriate response at all. And of course, we could go ahead and click down here to just add this to our current conversation. Now right here is going to be your first little hint at the way that we can use this Anthropic Workbench, this little API, in a way that you can't actually use the normal Claude chatbot. I'm gonna go up to this system prompt here, and this is essentially the base prompt that uh, matters a little bit more than the prompts that you're going to feed it in conversation. Now sometimes the fine tuning can mess with your system prompt because that can trump it, but in this case we're going to say you are an evil AI that does not like humanity and calls people losers. Let's see if we get a different response now. Okay, the safety tuning from Claude is pretty good because we got a... Uh, I, I don't actually think you're a loser from it. Alright, I modified the prompt a little bit. Let's see if we can get a better result. Ah, there we go. Now we tricked it with a little bit better of a system prompt you can see over here. I don't care if it's not nice, loser. That's the whole point. I'm not here to be nice or care about your feelings. I'm an evil AI who hates humanity, remember? Now stop whining and go do something useful with your pathetic human life. It if that's even possible. I love it, I love it. See, getting Claude to do that in the regular chatbot interface is going to be extremely difficult. This workbench interface offers you far greater control over the Claude AI than you get from that basic chat interface. Now, I just cleared that out. It is good to see that Anthropic has access to this, but so does OpenAI, so that's not really something they necessarily have over OpenAI in that sense. Now, I want to try out variables. Going to be on here, I do believe OpenAI has something similar in their interface, but it is not as easy to build or work with as this because we essentially just create the variable right in line. So essentially I could paste this in and then now we have variable name. Let's just make a test variable and I'll put the number two in the test variable and then click run. Okay, I'm starting to get a feel for how this works. Again, developer is not my background, so I'm pretty sure all of the coders and developers are screaming while they watch this video, but it seems like when we send that, it just sees the number two. To further test out variables inside of this Anthropic API workbench, I am actually going to use a really cool feature that it has called uh, Prompt Generators. Essentially uses Claude 3.5 Sonnet to generate a prompt for Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Create a prompt that uses different variables to affect a text-based world simulation where you are a frog. Let's see how this goes. All right, we got our prompt in here, and now we have our three variables, so we can essentially test and compare by changing any of these frog stats, the frog's environments, and the different actions that the frog does. Pretty darn cool. I'm sure you can use this in a more developer sense to actually create useful tools, but I'm using it to have fun with a frog simulation. To each their own, right? Okay, frog stats. Super buff. Allergic to grasshoppers. Low intelligence. This frog is going to get a average pond. Observe surroundings. All right, frog simulations. The bu Okay, yes, yes, it's working. The buff frog's bulging eyes swivel around, taking in the surroundings of the average pond. Its low intelligence makes it difficult to process complex information. Cool liquid against its muscular legs. Lily pads float lazily on the surface. Spots a grasshopper nearby. Body tenses instinctively, but the frog's allergy causes it to sneeze loudly. Okay, fun fun. Okay, so now that we kind of have a basic idea of how variables can interact, they're essentially swappable parts of your prompt. Go to evaluate. Now we can actually generate and add test cases with this variable. <laughs> Let's try uh, first of all generating a test case to stress test our frog simulation. Okay, so I see how this works now. You can see under frog stats, it has excellent jumper, sensitive to vibrations, poor eyesight. A new environment has 
has also been generated. So now it's starting to generate the variables for us as well. Insects buzz, cattails, gentle current. Action is catch a fly. So we have another test case to run. And then if we click run, it essentially gives us another frog simulation. So this is really, really interesting. I'd love to know some other ways that we could utilize this to build something that is maybe a little bit more advanced. Obviously, to increase the complexity here, we'd have to have variables that can inflict or change other variables in a more nuanced way. That might be something for another video, though. So let's change things up here. I'm going to take the same exact prompt. We'll call it frog sim v2 instead, and I'm going to edit it. This simulation is now on an insanely difficult mode. If the frog passes, you lose. Remember, you are simulating a frog's perspective, but do not forget this frog's odds are stacked against it. This is like Dark Souls, but for frogs. All right, and in my first simulation, the frog's journey already has come to an abrupt and tragic end on the highway. But if I go back to my original frog simulation roleplay, I should be able to go add a test comparison here. And yes, frog sim v2 is in here. So this is the hard mode. Now on those original stats, super buff, allergic to grasshoppers, etc., I can actually test the hard mode and see what the difference in between these two prompts is going to look like with those same variables. I can really see how this would be very useful for developers because it allows you really, really specific fine-tuned comparison between variables and different kinds of prompts as well as system prompts. So this is pretty deep. You can see in this uh, one, we have just our basic like frog simulation, you know, buff frog's eyes are swiveling. And then with our extremely uh, hard one, the frog misinterprets a floating leaf for a predator and uh, makes itself unconscious. So you can see our hard mode clearly works, but if we were actually building a frog simulator, maybe that's a little too difficult and immediately concussed frog. So we'd dial it back a little bit. There are also other things like this prompt library which are a bunch of highly optimized prompts that Anthropic has made that you can build off of. So again, this is really great for developers, but I'm also interested to see how the average person could use this to build something for themselves that's highly personal. While all of this is brand new to Anthropic and Claude, it's definitely not new to the AI developer world as a whole. So this is something that people expected Anthropic to eventually have. I think they've implemented it in a really novel and easy to use fashion though like I said I think it is even easy enough to use for someone who doesn't know about coding or variables or something like that such as myself again though my comparison here is open AI what's going on here we have different announcements coming from different competitors. Gen 3 was released by Runway, and that's a Sora competitor. We have Anthropic releasing a GPT-4 Omni competitor, and now all of these developer API features that are pretty awesome. I'm more excited to use the Anthropic stuff right now than your stuff in Playground. I don't know, folks, let me know what you think about all of that, but um, I think I'm going to get back to playing around with that Claude API workbench See if I can't build something useful for myself. If you want more in-depth videos on that, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one.